Hello everyone, Scott here. Welcome back to Storytime. Today we're reading The Christmas Tree Who Loved Trains. A pine tree grew in the farthest corner of the tree farm. She sat alone on a small patch of land that bordered the train track. The tree loved the trains, their speed, their click-clacking wheels, their powerful engines. When she heard one rumbling in the distance, the tree would stand tall, her needles tingling. Then, zoom! Her branches would ripple in the wind as the train roared past. The noise kept birds from nesting in her branches and squirrels from playing nearby. But the tree didn't mind. The trains were company enough. One morning, a little boy ran all the way to the farthest corner of the tree farm. He planned to pick a Christmas tree, but first he hoped to see a train. He watched the track, he waited, then zoom! His hair rippled in the wind as the train roared past. The boy smiled. He noticed the tree. She seemed to be smiling too. This is the one, Dad, he said. Soon a truck came to dig the tree out of the ground. Workers bound her roots in a burlap sack. The man and the boy strapped her onto their pickup and drove away. The tree could no longer hear the trains. She could no longer feel them blasting past. She no longer stood tall either. When they got home, the man carried the tree inside. He shuffled her into a corner of the room. It felt strange, dark, cramped. The tree missed her corner. She missed being outside. Most of all, she missed the trains. At night, when the house was silent, she imagined she heard their whistles. One day, the man strung lights around her. The family hung objects from her branches. When they finished, the boy placed a star on her topmost branch. The tree fell asleep to the ringing of sleigh bells. She dreamed of trains. As she slept, she didn't notice the whoosh from the chimney. She didn't hear the boots gliding swiftly across the floor. She didn't feel the rustling under her branches. When she woke, it was to the sound of happy squeals. She heard something else, too. A noise that had her needles tingling once again. Could it be? It was! A train chugged along its track right beneath her. The tree twinkled. She carried her lights and ornaments proudly. The boy played around the Christmas tree all morning long and for days after. The tree had never been happier. It was a joyous season. Too soon, the man packed up the ornaments, the lights, the star. Finally, he put away the train. The tree grew anxious. Don't worry, whispered the boy. We found the perfect spot for you. The man lifted her onto his pickup. The boy jumped in beside her. They traveled down a dusty road, past a barn, a chicken coop, a scarecrow. That's when she heard it. Chugga, the tree stretched to see. Chugga, the pickup came to a stop. Choo-choo! As the tree stretched upright, she felt the zoom. It was even better than she remembered. The man and the boy planted the tree at the edge of their farm. There, she still loves the trains, their speed, their click-clacking wheels, their powerful engines. Her branches ripple as they pass. Birds and squirrels stay away, but the tree doesn't mind. She has the drains to keep her company. And even better, the little boy. The end. Thank you all for joining us today and have a wonderful holiday. Now let's pop on over to Ronnie for an amazing craft. Hi everybody. 
This is Ronnie here at the Colorado Railroad Museum, and I'm very excited to be here. We are doing a craft that is inspired by the book, The Christmas Tree Who Loved Trains. So much fun. I can't wait to get started. Let's see what we need for our craft. But first, let me show you what we're gonna do. We are going to make a Christmas tree with snow, and there is a little train in there. But then at the end, I'm gonna show you something else you can do with this very same craft. Okay, let's get started. First thing you're gonna need is a bowl. Now, a lot of these things that I've been using are kind of recycling because there's stuff I've already had at home, so I'm just trying to use everything I have and not going to go out and buy stuff. So this is our bowl. We also have some green paper. Usually comes the size, but we're gonna be cutting it. We're gonna need a popsicle stick. We're gonna need a star, any color you like. Um, we're gonna need scissors to cut the paper. And of course, we're gonna need fluff, lots of it. Well, maybe not that much. Okay, let's see what we need to do first. So I have the green paper here, and it's kind of too big to make a big tree. So we're gonna make a smaller tree. So what we're gonna do first is cut it in half. I mean, fold it in half, fold it in half. And then we're gonna cut it. There we go. Again, I know I always say this, but it's good to be having someone with you so that you can be safe with the scissors and you don't get hurt. We're only gonna use half of this and then we're gonna fold it again. We're gonna cut it again. Okay. And I know you all know what, what shape a Christmas tree is. You got it, it's a triangle. So I'm gonna show you how to do that in just a second. So now you have a whole bunch of little rectangles that you can make more trees if you'd like. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start cutting from this little corner and up, and then this little corner and up to get your triangle. flip the paper over. <laughs> okay, there's our triangle. It has a little flat top, but that's okay. You can put a nice little star up there. Now what you're gonna do is you're going to cut it into strips. Usually four. And if it's too big, your tree, then you can leave the bottom part off. Okay. Now here is where the popsicle stick comes in handy. So we're going to get, oops, I forgot, we need a glue stick. I was gonna use regular glue, but I realized that that can be pretty messy. So we're gonna put a little bit of glue. I'm gonna put the top of the tree there. And it doesn't have to be perfectly aligned, but try to get them as close as possible to, to what it would look like. We're gonna leave a little separation. Because we all know that Christmas trees, even though we love them and they're perfect to us, they are also not exactly symmetrical or perfect. And that's okay, that's why we like them so much. Hmm, I don't know. I don't think I need the bottom one. I think it'll be too, too much. All right, so now you have your Christmas tree. On top of the Christmas tree goes the star. So you could either cut out a star, you could put glitter on top, and put glue and then glitter to make a star. These ones I had at home from when my kids were little. So 
It's a little stick, little sticky star. I'm gonna put it on the very top. All right. So now we have our lone tree. Now, as you know, a lot of these trees are up in the mountains. So here's our mountain. And again, you're gonna need a family member to do this because they don't want you to hurt yourselves. We're going to take the top the scissors or something and we're gonna make a hole in the very top. See, you and I have trouble with it. Woo, surprised me. Okay, and then we're gonna put our little tree on the top. Again, make sure that you get a chance to let this dry really good because then the paper won't come off at all. So there's your tree, your lonely little tree up in the mountain. But we also know this time of year, in the holidays, there's gonna be some snow. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take some fluff and we're gonna put it around it. Most of the time you want to glue it on. That way you can put as much as you want. You can even put it on the tree. That would be kind of fun. Okay. And if you get a chance, I think at the at fabric stores or craft stores, they have these little tiny trains that you can get. I know we have them here at the museum. And then this is the train that likes to go around and make the tree happy because the tree loves trains. So this goes with our first book, The Christmas Tree Who Loved Trains, this craft here. But then this is two crafts in one. So we also celebrate the Polar Express, as you well know. So if you took the Christmas tree off and piled more fluff, and then really glue it on there, or you can make another one. It doesn't have to be the same one. You can make another one. Now you have that mountain, like in the book, the Polar Express, and here's your train that can go all the way around on its way whoop, to the Polar Express. And you can put it right there. You could glue it, you could play with it. There's a lot of things you can do. I hope you got to enjoy our craft for December. I truly hope you have a wonderful holiday season from the Colorado Railroad Museum. Thanks. Bye. Like, comment, share, and subscribe. Commenting and sharing in particular may qualify as virtual engagements for important funding programs like the SCFD.